What's up? Joseph Rothschild here, a.k.a. Mono Bluetron, back again with another episode of 10-Minute Testing. So first thing I want to do is apologize. Uh, there's been a lot more net decking on this show and a lot less casual brewing. That's for two reasons. The first is I got the Olive Garden job. So every day from when Olive Garden opens to about 6 p.m., I stand in front of a counter and say, I apologize, but Red Lobster is closed right now, so this is the best you're going to get. Then from 6 to 9 every night, I have rehearsal for an off-Broadway production I am a part of called Conversations with an Average Joe. It opens tomorrow, and the first performance I'm in is a week from tomorrow. That's Saturday, September 10th. I figure I have a pretty low subscriber count, so if any of my subscribers want comp tickets, let me know. Just send me a PM with your name, and I will get you those for the 10th show if you are in the New York City area. Um, but I've used the sort of emphasis on already recognized net decks to see if we can take decks that are on the fringe of playability, uh, make a couple tweaks or changes, and see if they can be competitive in a realized meta. So that is the overarching theme of the deck we are playing today, which I will show you right now. We're playing Spellbook. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Spellbook is a deck from several years ago. Uh, very fun, very fair. It only did interactive things. Players liked playing it, playing against it. And then Konami, in their infinite quest to destroy fun, teamed up with Riot Games and Jagex to ban the only good card in the deck, Spellbook of Judgment. I'll just say it right now. Spellbooks did nothing wrong. That's a lie. Um, in all honesty, Spellbooks was one of the most broken decks of all time, and all those cross list duels that you see sometimes on YouTube, it's always Spellbooks and Dragon Rulers in finals. The deck would routinely draw like 15 cards a turn, completely nuts. It was too synergistic, too advantage grinding, too painful to play against. And to be honest, if any of you are former Spellbook players, I really hope that you come home tonight and find your significant other in bed with Spellbook Magician of Prophecy. Um, however, we are trying to take this completely degenerate strategy from the realm of complete unplayability to fringe playability. One thing that Spellbooks really can't do is special summon, so we're going to play Card of Demise, some stunning spellcaster guys along with uh, Grand Spellbook Tower so that they get benefit from being spellcasters, along with things like Duality, Quaking Mirror Force, and Strikes. We have... Three Kaiku and two Jaugen. These are our stun men. Uh, Kaiku is to push for damage. Also, his effect's pretty good. Jaugen is completely nuts right now. We have three Spellbook Magician of Prophecy. He adds a Spellbook to your hand. One Spellbook of Power. This increases a Spellcaster's attack by a thousand. And then when they destroy a monster by battle, adds a Spellbook to your hand. Three Spellbook of the Master. This copies a Spellbook in your graveyard if you have one in your hand. Three Card of Demise. You know what this does. Three Spellbook of Eternity. This gets a Spellbook out of your Banish Zone to your hand. Three Spellbook of Secrets. This card adds a Spellbook from your deck to your hand. Three Duality. Three Spellbook of Wisdom. This card prevents your Spellcasters from being uh, destroyed by spells or traps. Either one. Um, three Spellbook of Fate. This card's nuts. It can either Calcab by returning a set spell or trap to an opponent's hand, or Book of Moon, or banish a card your opponent controls. Then we got this Grand Spellbook Tower, which shuffles a spellbook from your graveyard into your deck and draws you a card during the standby phase. Three Quakings, three Strikes, and a Warning. So to save some time, I'm not really going to be able to commentate these duels because things go too fast in spellbooks, you do too many things. But basically, what you want to do is open. Spellbook Magician of Prophecy, and then uh, hopefully one copy of either Secrets, Master, Tower, or Fate. Um, let's say you don't open any of those. Uh, you use Spellbook Magician of Prophecy to get Secrets. You use Secrets to get Master. You reveal one other Spellbook in your hand, and then use Master to get Fate. Then you set Fate, and it can be a Book of Moon, either for your opponent's attacking monster to protect your Spellbook Magician, or for your Magician to get another search out of him. Hopefully you will have one of these uh, four cards along with Prophecy in your hand, so you can also play Grand Spellbook Tower and shuffle the Fate the next turn, drawing an extra card. From there on, you're just going to want to loop Fates and utilize the Spellbook cards in order to uh, get them um, either in the Graveyard or the Banish Zone, whichever you want, and then continue to use their effects. Wisdom provides extra protection in case you need it, um, and Power sets up OTKs. So with that, let's go into the games and see how things work. So our first match is up against Ignites. Uh, Ignites is actually not a particularly good matchup for us, except, you know, the deck isn't very good. Just because it continually special summons guys and we can't really use the spellbook ability to one-for-one one every turn. 
we've drawn some stuff, but not everything we need. We end up with a spellbook magician of prophecy and a, a bunch of spellbooks set. We card of demise and unfortunately draw two creatures, which occasionally happens. He draws ignition phoenix and is able to use his ignites to make ignite things occur. He's going to try and get in, but I saw him notice sending them all to the graveyard. So we're looking to be in a pretty good place. We're going to use Spellbook of the Master to get the fate that we weren't able to get last turn, and then we summon Spellbook Magician of Prophecy. We can now get power. Um, this, of course, means that now we're in business. Our opponent still does not have a lot of uh, Ignite stuff to do, but he uses Ignition Phoenix to summon one guy. We're going to Spellbook of Fate our Prophecy face down so we can flip summon it and shuffle the fate back to draw an extra card. We draw uh, Spellbook of Secrets, which is pretty nuts. We're going to add Master to our hand. Uh, just grind out, draw a bunch of cards. I'm trying to figure out how I'm getting over this 2800 monster. So, unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of ways for me to do that. And Banishing it isn't particularly good, because he can just go get another one every turn with Ignition Phoenix. And I don't want to have to destroy every monster in his deck. That seems pretty impossible. But we're going to flip our guy face down, add a, another Spellbook of Secrets to our hand, and hopefully find some way to win this game. Um... We draw a Regeki, which is pretty good. I don't want to fire off the Regeki in a world where I'm only getting in for 500 and he gets to just use his Ignition Phoenix again. I'm going to have to destroy this Ignition Phoenix if I want any chance of being in this game, but if he has any other Ignites in his hand, then I'm kind of screwed anyway, so it's a little frustrating. We are going to fade away the uh, Ignition Phoenix right now, figuring at some point we're going to have to do it, and this is the turn we're going to Regeki, hoping he can't rebuild his board. We're just going to fire off a whole shitload of spellbooks and then summon Kaiku. Um, I love Kaiku. <laughs> Dear God, he's so good. Uh, so we get in for a little bit, um, but really not a whole lot. Uh, then in second main, we're going to master, and we're going to use master back. Um, so he's going to pendulum summon four, five, which is nuts. Then he's going to trap stun. I'm getting a little concerned because now I can't quaking mirror force. Uh, he goes into, is, what is this, ZW Leo arms? Yeah. So he's going to add a bunch of ZWs to his hand, make Utopia. I'm like, I see what's going on here. I will banish your Utopia right now. Then he soul charges, and I'm like, okay, well, as long as he can't destroy my monsters, it's okay that I'm locked out of my battle trap for now. He's going into Utopia the Lightning. I can loop Fate and banish Utopia the Lightning at any time, so I decide I'm going to try to do that, and then um, when he goes to equip any of the ZW guys to the Utopia, I'm just going to completely banish it out of the world. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to Spellbook of Power in order to allow our Kaiku to get over one of the uh, Leo arms and add Spellbook of the Master back to our hand. That's going to get us Fate. Um, and or we can use both because we used Master to copy um, Spellbook of Power. So we just get Fate hand uh, Master. Then as soon as he goes to equip, we're going to banish with Spellbook of Fate. He uses Leo arms. He's going to attack us with Leo arms. I'm like, okay, we'll flip Quaking. You got it. He goes into Castell, but we still have a Solemn Notice set from a million years ago. And now we can loop Spellbook of Power in order to uh, do whatever we want. We're going to master copying uh, the one that gets from Banished, power this guy, add one to our hand, and attack for lethal. Probably 10 minutes already since that game took 200 years. We're up against a really good deck that I would like to encourage all of you to play called Inferno Tempest. Um, unfortunately, our opponent is not playing the Grinder Golem Sweep, and is in fact playing Lava Golem, hoping that our opponent, their opponent is just apparently too stupid to... Uh, understand that you shouldn't be attacking into an Inferno Tempest deck with Lava Golem. Uh, we have the open here, so we're going to uh, go ahead and do everything. We end up with a Spellbook of Fate set, and a Grand Spellbook Tower, and a Spellbook Magician of Prophecy, and a Secrets, and a, a Master and Grave. So we're going to um, return that set card, because I've, you know, if he just sets a monster and a card, I have no idea what it's going to be. We're going to power, hoping we can beat over whatever he's set, but it's Necroface, and at this point I realize what's going on. Like, the legacy of Yadagaratsu was pretty close to making me know what was happening, but that takes the cake. Uh, we're going to flip Prophecy um, down with uh, Fate, and then we're going to get Eternity so we can get back the Secrets. We're going to use the Secrets to, I guess we just get Wisdom, and then we're going to end our turn. As long as we have a Jaugen active, we should be okay. Uh, we're going to spell Book of Fate to banish this card, just because we have no other way of dealing with it. I see the Inferno Tempest, and I go, okay, I know what's going on here. So my modus operandi becomes, I need to deal enough damage to him that he is under 3,000. We have a Kaiku, so I'm like, okay, well, let's start getting into the Kaiku beats. We're going to Solemn Notice his Swift Scarecrow. I know he plays Hand Traps now, and that's good, because Battle Fader can't be used while Jaugen is on board. So we're pretty close to getting him under um, lethal, or under the range that is secretly lethal for this deck. Uh, we use Spellbook of Wisdom on our Kaiku, because I misclicked. That's really what you want to see. 
Uh, he chains Wabaku to Grand Spell Book Tower, then Maxi to that, then accumulated fortune of that. Uh, really fun, kind of cheesy way to get value out of Maxi in a world where I'm not special summoning. We're just grinding him out now, just using a shitload of spell cards in order to add a shitload of spell cards to our hand. We end with a fate, and then we can't do any damage because of Wabaku. He's going to set a million cards. Um, my idea is that we will be able to beat him eventually. Uh, at some point, he will run out of things that aren't Battle Fader, and we will win. Um, <clears throat> and that point, it turns out, is now we're going to banish this uh, set card, which happens to be the other Necroface, which is fine. And then we're going to start getting in, and he just decides he does not want to play it out. So our third match is up against Zombies. Uh, I feel pretty good about this, especially when we've opened Kaiku. Uh, unfortunately... We don't really have a way to make the spellbook board, but we do have a way to make a bunch of stun traps. Kaiku, he's going to send Mizuki and then normal summon Raiden. I figure, wait, if I solemn notice the Raiden, I could actually just banish all this shit from his graveyard. So I don't know what the set card is. I figure it must be a battle trap or something. So I'm going to uh, get my way to a spellbook of fate and use its cow cap effect in order to return it to the hand. And then, boom, bop, here comes Kaiku. Oh, man. Banishing Mizuki with Kaiku has got to be the best feeling on Earth. So I feel like we've pretty much already won this game. From this point, we can loop Fate to uh, banish whatever he plays every turn. This one, we just have to set face down, so that's what we do. And things are looking pretty good for us. We're going to get a second copy of Spellbook Magician. We use that to get a Secrets, use that to get a uh, Eternity, and then we're going to use Power in order to draw a card off of our Prophecy, and that's when we get the Fate that we need. So... We're going to use Eternity to get Master, use Master to use uh, Secrets, Secrets to get Eternity. We're just, like, making sure that we have enough resources to convince him we fate every turn until we win. He gets Bolt Sark and is able to use it as a removal spell with Chief Priest, but then he uses, um, what's it called, Shinrai Sage in order to special summon Unizombie, and I'm like, I'll just set that face down. I do, and he decides he doesn't want to play anymore. So we're back with the deck, and I'm sure it's over 10 minutes, but to be honest, I was pretty excited. All of our games were really grindy, but we ended out on top in all the ones we played. Uh, certainly we weren't playing any, like, super tier 1 decks, but Synchro Zombies might be, like, tier 2-ish, and we had a pretty good showing against that. Additionally, Jaugen is pretty good against all the other decks we didn't play. Um, I would say definitely the biggest problem in the deck is the inability to really kill your opponent. I would want to play a third Jaugen, and then I'd want to play probably some beefy spellcaster guys for tower who can strain your opponent's play. People like Kaiku. Like, truthfully, I want to play Thunder King Ryo, but one, he's not a spellcaster. Two, he way, way, way hurts our ability to play the game. To be honest, I think I might even look at Breaker the Magical Warrior, uh, the old all-star in spellbooks, just because we have to play something that can attack. Um... I was the least impressed with Spellbook of Wisdom. I think I would probably take at least one out for additional copies of Spellbook of Power, which would help us with our inability to kill our opponents. And more importantly, I was really happy with the Quakings, never felt like I wanted a different Mirror Force, and loved every single copy of Solomon's Train. The deck was incredibly complicated. Even in the games we won, I was kicking myself like, oh, we could have played so much more optimally. I think this deck is a lot of fun, has a lot of play to it, and is worth your time and investment. So that's that. I hope you enjoyed watching me play an actually good streamlined strategy instead of trying to jam two bad strategies into one very bad deck. I hope you broke out in a cold sweat as you watched someone activate 10 spellbooks in one turn and then breathed a sigh of relief when you remembered that judgment was banned. And most of all, I hope you just enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to give me a like, a comment, or a subscribe. It really helps me out. And if you want to see me stream, I play the decks we make on this show on Twitch every Tuesday and Thursday from 9.30 a.m. to noon on twitch.tv slash monoblutron, link in the description. And finally, if you want to see a certain deck or archetype played in the next episode of 10-Minute Testing, let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. Otherwise, I'll see you Monday.